During my presentation, I talked about the disease and treatment related side effects in multiple myeloma. So uh, there are a lot of disease and treatment related side effects, so I couldn't discuss them all, so I chose four of them. So the first uh, disease related complication I talked about was uh, um, bone disease. So it's really important that if even if patients don't have um, uh, osteolytic lesions at diagnosis, that they will be treated by uh, by phosphonates or uh, the nose map if they have renal impairment just to prevent um, bone disease. So se the second disease and also tr mostly treatment related complication was peripheral neuropathy. Um, mo a few treatments like teldamide and bortezomib they give uh, peripheral neuropathy and we don't have preventive treatments to prevent the people uh, that the nurse will be damaged. So it's important when pe people experience some uh, complaints like tiggling or numbness in their both hands or both feet that they discuss it with the physician. Um, so that uh, depending from their complaints, like if they have problems with riding or opening the buttons of their shirt, that we need to adapt the therapy because uh, it's important that we early adapt the treatment um, to prevent um, that the peripheral neur neuropathy uh, is irreversible. The third, uh, mostly disease and but also treatment-related side effect is uh, infection. So patients with multiple myeloma are seven times um, fault uh, have a seven times fault increased risk for. Um, to get an infection, mostly from the respiratory tract. Uh, so we know out of yeah, research that uh, patients who are elderly or have a, um, a high risk multiple myeloma or active disease um, or patients with some uh, organ damage like uh, renal impairment, they have an increased risk for an infection. So uh, it's important as a healthcare provider, that we uh, do a good assessment and even start some preventive uh, treatments, like if patients get um, proteasome inhibitors, that we start uh, a cyclovar. Um, but uh, it's really important for the patient that if they got fever or some symptoms from an infection, that they go to the doctor and that we early... Um, manage this infection so that they don't wait a day. They need to go directly to the doctor. Um, the fault um, disease-related complication that I talked about is also fatigue. 90% uh, of the patients experience fatigue and one of the myths that uh, a lot of patients on caregivers think they need to rest, they need to calm down and that is, yeah, that is wrong. It's really important that you stay physically active, but it needs to be well guided. So it's important that we do an early assessment and just see that uh, the skeleton, that there isn't an instability of this uh, of the bones, um, and that it's safe to do some exercises. But there are a lot of exercises that we can do like doing a walk or do some um, um, that we can exercise the muscles like uh, doing some squats without uh, some weights um, just that the body stays active and uh, to improve the physical but also the mental health of our patients and reduce fatigue.